This is Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org with an update on the ongoing climate engineering insanity that is decimating our planet from top to bottom. No one has a right to interfere with the natural life support systems of our planet. If you examine this map, it's a combination radar map. This map shows how much area is covered by rainless, aerosolized cloud canopy. This is the goal of the climate engineers, to create a sun shield, if you will, one of their goals, I should state. But what's this doing to the rest of the planet when so much of the sun is being blocked, hydrological cycles being completely disrupted? What about other governments? Have they admitted to these programs? Yes. Chinese weather manipulation brings crippling snowstorm to Beijing. The Chinese government was open, at least for a time, about their weather modification programs until their engineered snowstorms did over a billion dollars worth of damage to Beijing. This is a popular science article. Mainstream media covered it. Why is climate engineering treated as some sort of fringe subject in the US? Because that's how the population has been programmed. In the meantime, our biosphere is torn apart by these programs. Why are the geoengineers focusing engineered cooldowns in certain regions like Boston? We have this article, Boston tops 100 inches of snow in record setting winter because they're trying to create headlines. They're trying to condition a population to have a certain perception of the climate, which is absolutely wrong. They are trying to hide the severity of damage done to our climate and what is unfolding as long as possible. Is the whole world cold? No, this is a GISS departure from normal high temperature map for the month of January. 2015. This map looks almost exactly like the entire year in 2014. And where is the most anomalously cold place below normal temperatures in the entire planet? The eastern end of the U.S. North American continent. Very, very anomalously low. This should be a huge red flag as to where the climate engineers are focusing their effort, where the media focuses their attention in order to give a false impression of the true state of the global climate. This is a GFS departure from normal temperature map. That's for February 24th. This is very recent. Again, where is it cold? Where is it not? You see a big cold patch on the eastern US as we've seen so consistently. And look toward the Arctic, not cold there. Far, far above normal temperatures. In fact, record setting temperatures. Warmer in the Arctic Circle in Alaska than Texas. Anyone who thinks this is normal or usual or natural is not living in reality. What about ocean temperatures? Perhaps the ocean temperatures are the cause of this cold weather on the East Coast, but how can that be? When we have record warm ocean temperatures, record setting temperatures through the year in 24, far, far above normal ocean temperatures, where's this cold coming from? It's coming from artificial ice nucleation and a manipulation of the jet stream. If we look at this animation, of moisture flowing across the Pacific. And as it nears the US West Coast, it looks as if it's hitting a wall. It cannot flow further because of the high pressure ridge that has been set up again and again and again by the aerosolization of the Eastern Pacific and the ionosphere heaters that can create high pressure domes. Installations like HARP, which many have heard of. HARP is only one of dozens around the globe. But as we see from this animation, the moisture cannot flow straight into the U.S. It's pushed up north through Alaska and then back down into the lower eastern 48 where it's used for the engineered cooldowns. This is the ridiculously resilient ridge that the meteorologists talk about, but they do not acknowledge the cause of. The entire climate science community is either clinically blind, afraid to tell the truth, or paid to lie. It's one of the three because they can't not know that this weather we are experiencing is anything but natural. On the precipitation, a NOAA map we see again and again and again. The large B over California means below normal precipitation. There must be below normal precipitation because they will not let the moisture flow in straight off the Pacific because it's simply too warm. It would shatter high temperature records. So they push it north through Alaska and then back down into the eastern US where precipitation is allowed to fall, as you see on this map, above normal precipitation on the east coast with the constant below normal on the west coast. 
This is a typical temperature map. I've shown many of these maps. Many people must think I'm showing the same map again and again and again, but I'm not. This is a current map with the west frying at record high temperatures and the east at record low temperatures again and again and again. We see how hot Alaska is. Again, that's because the jet stream is pushed up into Alaska instead of allowing it to come into the west coast of the US, lower 48. It's pushed back down, east coast is cooled off. This map should be looked at carefully. This is a current map and you see that it is rainy in Montana above the Canadian border while it is snowing at the Arizona-Mexico border. This is absolutely wrong. Anywhere there's enough moisture in the air, they can ice nucleate and cause frozen precipitation if enough of this material is dispersed. This map should be shocking to people to see that when we're media is talking about record cold temperatures in places and snow falling in southern Arizona, it's raining north of the Canadian border, north, north of the Montana Canadian border. This map should be considered carefully. Geoengineering could reduce global rainfall. Absolutely what we see. And again, the media, the climate science community pretending that climate engineering is not already going on. When will the population refuse to accept the lies they're being fed? Sierra snow, Sierra snow disaster, low snow spack, snowpack, non-existent rainfall exacerbates drought. The Sierra snowpack is at about 15 to 16% of normal. There is a drought cataclysm unfolding in California as we speak. The climate engineers can keep the moisture shut off as long as they want. NASA climate study warns of unprecedented North American drought. How can any climate scientist or science source claim any legitimacy when they ignore the single greatest factor in climate disruption today, climate engineering? This is inexcusable. The population should hold these people accountable. All who have participated in this lie should be held legally accountable for their crimes, their participation in these crimes. The US Drought Monitor, again, the flow of moisture is not being allowed to come into the U.S. West. Whether you want to consider California a climate sacrifice zone or a target, or I think most correctly both, the fact is this situation is completely engineered from top to bottom. Is the U.S. the only place experiencing drought? Absolutely not. Brazil is in an absolute drought crisis at the moment. Our media doesn't talk about that. Many regions around the globe are. On a warming planet, the laws of physics say it must rain more, not less. The only reason it can rain less is because climate engineering is completely thwarting the hydrological cycle. This is the planet we're headed for. Many might not take an image like this seriously, but they should, because this reality is very, very close. If people do not prioritize, if they do not help us in this fight to expose and stop climate engineering, and that's only the first step, I don't mean to insinuate at all that our challenges will end at that point. They are just beginning. But the single greatest step we could take in the right direction is to join together in this fight to expose and stop climate engineering, which would expose much more with the power structure, would start the dominoes falling. Please make your voice heard. Help us expose the crimes that are occurring in our sky. Thank you very much. This is Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org.